In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of horizontal scaling, load balancing, and immutable infrastructure. And I'll show you how to set up this kind of infrastructure on some EC2 instances manually using AWS. And the concepts apply really no matter what platform you're using, but I'll just specifically be showing you on AWS. That pain inside don't wanna feel it. So I pull up inside my cup and I just sit till I can't feel it. So let's say you have a server-side application running in a VM that's processing requests made by clients. This app could be written in literally any programming language. It's just a bunch of if statements and for loops and it takes up some processing power. If we get too many requests, our server might not be able to handle the load and it might just end up crashing. But we can horizontally scale this app just by making a copy of the virtual machine and distributing the requests between the instances using a load balancer. Now we can handle twice the load, and if that's not enough, we can just add another instance. The more instances of the app we have running at once, the more requests that we can process. It's simple. But what happens when there's an update to our code? The developers add a new feature and push an update, and we were on version 1, but now we need to update to version 2. How do we update all of these instances? Well, we could go through each instance one by one, pull the new code, install any of the dependencies, run the updates, and restart the app on each instance. But this can lead to some weird unknown errors and unknown states where part of the updates happen and the other parts don't. And maybe something runs in a weird way or maybe the entire application crashes because the update was unsuccessful. This is where immutable infrastructure comes in, where we would never update an existing instance, an existing virtual machine. Once it's there, it never gets modified. And when we need to make a modification, we just create a brand new virtual machine image that's configured with the newest version of the application and all the dependencies and any other updates that need to come. We can then create brand new virtual machines from this image and tell the load balancer to just start sending traffic to the new instances instead of the old ones. Then we can shut down the old instances and repeat this process every single time the code gets updated. And this kind of process is really easy to implement in cloud computing environments. This idea is pretty simple and this whole process can be automated by a variety of different tools. And in the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to implement this kind of thing manually without using any of those tools or scripts. And this can be kind of tedious and realistically, you would never do it manually. You would automate this process using tools like Packer to create the images and Terraform to actually set up the infrastructure. And I might make videos on those in the future, but for now, I think there's a lot of value in just learning how you can do these things manually, learning the process of how it's set up, and then you can appreciate the automation tools a little bit more when you learn how to use them. So I have a really simple web server set up on my local machine here that basically just serves up a random emoji every single time you refresh the page. And what we're gonna do now is deploy this to a bunch of EC2 instances, horizontally scale this application, and set up a load balancer to distribute the traffic for this application. So we could treat this as a brand new app or we could treat it as an update to an existing app. Either way, the process is pretty much the same. So we're gonna first set up a virtual machine with everything we need on it to actually run the app and we can test the app. And this will just be kind of a development environment for testing that our virtual machine is set up correctly. Once we set that up, we can create an image from that virtual machine and then create new virtual machines from that image to horizontally scale. So first step is to launch uh, a new VM just for testing the app works and then we can create the image from that. So I'm just gonna go in here, uh, I'm gonna create a new EC2 instance, a T2 micro is great. Um, when we're configuring everything, I'm gonna leave all of these default settings. It really doesn't matter now because this is just being used to create the image that will then create the instances from. So the VPC and the subnets doesn't really matter as long as I can connect to it from the public internet. Uh, the storage default is good, tags. Uh, so for the security group, I'm actually just gonna select all TCP from anywhere. Because this is just a testing environment, we'll use a different security group when we actually have the production servers in place that are created from this. So I'll just call this, uh, I don't know, any TCP that seems appropriate. And then we'll review and launch. I just gotta wait for this to be set up. So the instance is set up and I am now gonna connect to this using SSH. So just grab the SSH details here. Now I'm logged into the instance and I need to just set up this application in a way that it will work in a production environment. So first I'll just update the instance. Then I'm just gonna install node and then git. Then I'll 
clone the repo. And then I'm gonna install the dependencies. And this is a node app, so I'm installing node and I'm uh, installing the dependencies through the node package manager. But this would really apply to any kind of application we're hosting. We would need to pull in the code or maybe the binary. We would need to install any libraries that need to run with this um, just to make sure that it actually runs in this environment. So the server now runs. So I'm just gonna set this up as a service using systemd so that it will run at startup every single time. And then I'll start that service. So I should now be able to grab the public IP of this and make sure that my node app is running. There we go, there's a random emoji and this is coming from the EC2 instance. And I would also wanna set up anything else the instance needed. So maybe I wanna use CloudWatch to monitor the logs. I would have that set up. If it's uh, sending files to an S3 bucket or using um, RDS to store data in a database, that would all be set up here. Make sure it works correctly, everything's working. Uh, and then we can move on to the next step. So with this app, it's pretty basic. Everything's running. Uh, so I'm gonna go back into the EC2 management console and I have my EC2 instance that I've set up and I've made sure that I've tested that this is working exactly as I want it to work because I'm just gonna create duplicates of this instance. So if this is working, then I can horizontally scale it by creating you know, two or three or 20, 100 instances and then just balancing the load between those instances. So if this is working correctly, I can now go up to actions here and I'm gonna go to images and templates and I can click create image. And what this will do is start the process of creating an Amazon machine image or an AMI. And this is just a VM image that I can use as a base image uh, when I create new EC2 instances. So I'll just select this image in the future and all my EC2 instances will be set up in this exact way that I have set up right now. I'll just enter an image name, this is my emoji image. Uh, I'm gonna leave the description blank. I don't really need one for this. There's a no reboot uh, option that you can enable. Basically, this will uh, try and create an image from the EC2 instance without rebooting it. By default, it wants to stop the virtual machine and create an image that way, which is a much safer and better way to do it. But if we really wanted to keep our virtual machine running during this process, we could check this checkbox, but we probably shouldn't because it'll be much better uh, if it's allowed to shut down the instance and create an image from the shutdown version. Um, the default uh, volume type, I'm just gonna leave as all of the default values. I don't need to change any of those. We could add volumes and do other things, but this is absolutely fine. Uh, and then I'm going to click the create image button. And this is gonna take uh, probably like five minutes or something. So take a break, come back. So you can take a break and then come back when it's done. Um, I'm gonna have to wait like five minutes now, but if I go over to the left panel here, there should be images and under images, there's AMIs. If you click on AMIs, you'll be able to see uh, all the AMIs that exist in Amazon, including our custom AMIs, which we can see because it's saying owned by me at the top here. So this is the current image that it's creating from that virtual machine. So we just have to wait for the status to change from pending to, uh, I don't know, probably active or something take a couple minutes. So my AMI has now been created, its status is available. Uh, so now I'm done with this testing instance. That was really only set up so that I could set up the app and, and test that it worked. So realistically, I would terminate this thing. There we go, I'm just gonna terminate this. Uh, and now we can use that image that we just created to start scaling our application. And there's a lot of ways we can do this. I'm gonna do it the very manual way. I'm just gonna go create like three instances right now uh, through the instances console. But uh, we can use an auto scaling group with an application load balancer to do it. We can set it up with uh, tools like CloudFormation or Terraform. There's probably other ways, but I don't know about them. So let's just do it the very, very manual way. Uh, I'm gonna click launch new instance. And now from here where we select our AMI, uh, usually we'd probably select a base image, Ubuntu, Amazon, Linux, whatever. Uh, we're gonna go to my AMIs and there's my emoji image AMI. And I should mention, uh, whichever region you create the AMI in, that's where it will exist and it won't exist in any other region. So I created this in North California, which means that I'll only be able to use this image if I'm creating infrastructure within that region. Um, so keep that in mind. So I'm gonna select that, uh, T2 micro is good, configure instance details. So if I had a custom VPC right now, I'd probably put this on a private
private subnet, but I don't have a custom VPC, so I'll just leave it like this. I am going to create three instances, though, instead of one. And, oh, that's funny. I get an, uh, a message saying, hey, maybe you want to use an auto-scaling group. Yes, I probably should, but I want to do this manually. Uh, if I had IAM roles, like if I was using CloudWatch or S3 or something, I would set that up here. Like everything needs to be configured for the production environment in this case. Uh, I don't need any of these to be changed, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, so let's go to add storage. I'm good with that storage tags. I don't care. Security group, important again, because... These are application instances and they're only going to exist in the private network part of our infrastructure. Or that's where they should exist because we're going to have a load balancer that's connected to the public internet. The load balancer can connect to these instances on the private network. So what we want to do is uh, we don't need to SSH instance them. We never need to touch these now because immutable infrastructure, we're not going to update anything. Um, so we only need to allow traffic uh, on a custom TCP port. There we go. Custom TCP port 8080. That's just because that's what I've set up for the node app. Uh, and we're going to use a custom IP and we need the private network address for the VPC, the virtual private cloud that we're currently using. So if I just go to services and go to VPC, I want to check the private IP CIDR block for the current VPC that I'm using. Uh, so I'm going to go to your VPCs and if you have a custom VPC set up, uh, you can just check what the CIDR block is for that. Uh, I'm using the default one, which is this one, and I can see that this is the private address here. So I'm just going to copy this. This is 172.31.0.0/16. This is the default block for the default VPCs within AWS. So if you haven't created a custom VPC, this is what you can use. Uh, so I'll put that in here. So only EC2 instances on this private network can access this instance on port 8080. So that secures it down because no other network requests can come into this EC2 instance or all of the EC2 instances that I create. So I'll go review and launch and I'll launch and I do not need a key pair because I'm never going to log into these things. And now it will set up three EC2 instances. Let's go view the instances. Uh, there's the testing one that's shut down. And here are the three that I just created. So these are three identical instances of the application. And now we need to just distribute the load across them. So while these are setting up, I'm going to launch another instance. Um, and I'm going to install Nginx on it. So I just chose Amazon Linux 2 there, T2 Micro. Um, I'm going to use the default BPC. And I don't need any other configuration here. And for the security group, because this is going to uh, install Nginx, it's going to accept HTTP requests and then forward them on to the private instances. I'm going to create a new security group. I'll just call this, uh, I don't know, load balance. I don't think I gave the other one a name. That's bad. I do need SSH because I'm going to log in and actually install Nginx on this. Um, and then I'm going to accept HTTP requests. There they are, HTTP. And honestly, if this was in production, I would uh, set up HTTPS. Now I would forward HTTP requests to port 443. Um, so I'll just enable both of them for now, but really I'll only be using HTTP in this one. I'm not going to set up a certificate. So I'll set up that instance as well. And let's go view all the instances. So oh, I should name this. Uh, this is the load balancer and all the unnamed ones are just the different application instances. Um, so these are now up and running and uh, here is, let's see, if I go to the instance summary, ha, here's their private IP addresses. So this one is 172.31.28.150 and this is a different private IP address and this has a different one too. So what I want to happen is I want to set up Nginx to distribute the load across those private IP addresses. Uh, these cannot be accessed over the public internet so I can't enter this in my uh, browser and actually view the app or even the public IP address um, because they're all private. So. I uh, just got to wait. Okay, this is now running. So I'm going to use this IP address to log into this instance. Yes, going to install Nginx um, and I'll put the commands in the description if you want them. And I'm just installing, starting and enabling Nginx because we're going to use that as a load balancer. It's really easy to set this up as a load balancer. And I'm just going to modify the Nginx configuration file. Because uh, if we come down here to the server portion of the Nginx configuration, uh, we can delete everything below server name. So all of these things just create a really small server block. There we go. Uh, and I am now going to create uh, a new location. So any requests that come in on port 80, so any HTTP requests that come in, we're going to proxy past that to HTTP slash slash, uh, I'm going to call this application. Uh, and then what I need to do 
is application is just going to be a name of a block of servers that we put in here. So we're just going to list uh, all three IP addresses. And when a request comes in, it's just going to balance the load, act as a reverse proxy to each of those three different instances. Let's so create an upstream block, call it application. And then here I just list the IP addresses. So for that, I'll need to grab these. So here's one of the application instances. Paste that in at port 8080. And then I'll get the next one. So that was really easy to implement with Nginx. Uh, now I just need to save this file and then restart Nginx. Uh, I messed up, I always mess something up. What did I mess up? So I think I need to put server in front of each of these. I really need to learn how to use Vim better. Oof. Do not need to go on that indentation. All right. Um, so let's try saving that with the server. And it's still not working because I think this block actually needs to go above the server block. So let's move that right here. There we go. Anything good enough. Uh, okay, so let's try restart. Okay, yeah, so um, the server, the upstream block needs to go above the server outside of the server and uh, each thing needs to have a server at the beginning of the line, so I missed miss those two things. So uh, that's now restarted. So if I curl a uh, local host, we should get a yeah, oh, that's awesome, a different emoji each time. So that means that if I go back to my instances here, let's just copy the public IP address of the load balancer. Um, and I enter this into my browser, I should be able to see a random emoji. So this is the application working and it's going through nginx now. Uh, but it's actually distributing the load between those three different instances. So if I had millions of users requesting emojis, uh, then, you know, it wouldn't be my application instances that would fail because this is horizontally scaled. But I've also added an endpoint here, slash EC2. Uh, so if I go to that, it just prints out some of the details from the EC2 instance so that we can see which instance it actually ends up on. So this is the ID and this is the... Audition. All right, so this is, uh, yeah, the instance ID, this is the, the private IPv4 address. So when I refresh this page, it should go to a different instance. So uh, yeah, there's a different private IP address, different private IP address. So it's just rotating through those three different instances. It's just balancing the load between those instances. So this is now horizontally scaled, it's load balanced. It was all very manual and tedious, but this kind of idea applies when you use immutable infrastructure, when you horizontally scale your application, you'll just wanna use a more automated way of doing it. And if we now had version two of the app, maybe get even more emojis, whatever, uh, we would just repeat that process. Go create a, a new EC2 instance, set up the VM, however it needs to be for version two of this application, create an image from that, horizontally scale it, point the load balancer at those new instances, but you'd automate it. So that's it for this video, but stay tuned for more videos on cloud computing. That pain inside don't wanna feel it yeah. So I pull up inside my cup and I just sit till I can't feel it